Now, just because I'm not currently playing electric football does not mean that I have abandoned electric football. Uh, on the contrary, I'm still working on these uh, Chicago Bears figures. Uh, only 11 players, and it seems like that this project is, is going to take just as long as the last project, which was 42 players. Uh, that's the way it goes. Uh, as many of you recall, this past few months have been uh, not great for me, but things are are turning, make, taking a turn, I guess you could say, but um, this time we're going to talk about painting chin straps on electric football figures. Now, some of you may immediately say, well, wait a minute, you can buy adhesive chin straps to put on these things. Yes, you can. I don't like those because, number one, they're too big, especially for the uh, uh, Fab Five figures. Uh, they're, they're a little more to scale to the uh, 67 big man scale figures, but not so much to these. Uh, number two, they don't stay on that well. Uh, they do come off. Uh, I put some chin straps on all my home team Steelers um, and also my, at least some of my away team Bears. And uh, some of those have come off. And uh, the problem is, is they get stuck beneath the face masks. And so you can't really get back in there without uh, tearing the face masks off to uh, uh, try to put them back on. For me, Ooh, nice catch. Uh, sorry, watching the game while I do this. Uh, interception. Um, it's easier to uh, paint chin straps beneath the chins of these players. And uh, we may turn the uh, bright light on here so we can get a look at these up close and focus in. Now, um, immediately you, you'll notice that this isn't extending you know, out beyond the helmet the way a modern chin strap does. Um, that's okay with me. It's, it's more, for me, it's more about there being a chin strap visible beneath the face mask without depending on those crappy adhesive chin straps that don't stick that well and that don't stay on. Now, others out there will tell you, oh, they'll stay on just fine. Uh, uh, your mileage may vary. They don't stay on well for me at all, and it might have something to do with uh, the way I affix face masks, because you have to put the chin straps on before you put on the face masks. Um, but this way, you don't even have to fool with the paper chin straps. Um, and in my opinion, it looks just as good. And uh, the thing with the chin strap is, um, even if you buy expensive adhesive chin straps, you can't see them beneath most face masks. You know they're there. You might be able to get a hint of them, but this does the same thing for me. Okay? And We'll just do, just random, just pick these up by random. Uh, going to be a little more difficult to see on some of these, but you can see that just fine. These aren't symmetrical. Um, the uh, contours of the Fab Five figures' faces won't allow symmetry because the faces aren't symmetrical. And uh, that's the way it's been since the 60s. But it's in there. I mean, there's a chin strap painted on this figure. Um, you can argue whether that looks spectacular or not, but once the face mask is covering their faces, depending on the type of face masks I use, you, you probably won't even see it, but I know it's there. Okay. It's a running back figure, cornerback figure. Yeah. Yeah, and up close, certainly, you can see, well, you should have been a little more careful with that. He's gone over that with some flesh tones to smooth that out. I actually did and had some battles to try to get it uh, the lines smooth across. But again, because of the contours of the face on these figures. Um, these aren't well-defined faces on these things. But, you know, once the face, ma once the face mask is on there, that's, that's going to look just fine. You may miss the little uh, straps hanging out on the sides that don't even attach properly. Uh, but for me, this, this suits my needs. Okay. And a hard time keeping them in focus for some reason. Uh, here's the uh, other cornerback and running back figure. She did a better job on that one. Go figure. Uh, a little less visible. But it seems to be uh, put a smoother lines on there. It's all very abstract on these Fab Fives anyway, the faces. Uh, I mean, keep in mind that uh, when these were designed, you're supposed to paint the face masks on. You can really see it on the backer figures, and I'll show you that in a few moments. But um, 
the face masks are actually molded onto these figures. It's it's poorly defined. It's very abstract, like I said, but it's that's the way that it was intended. Uh, uh, when these were designed, the uh, brass face masks did not exist, to my knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Looks pretty good. All that's left now, I don't think I'm going to put the little plates on top of their heads or on the, the collars on the back or or anything on their arms or, or hands. We're just The next step is going to be the uh, orange stripes on the leg. And then we'll clean those up with white paint. I'm going to make them pretty thick because I'm going to be applying blue Sharpie to the edges of the orange stripes in order to give the trim. And then sh blue Sharpie on the um, sleeves as well for the and the socks, hopefully, for what I'm going for here. Oh, yeah, and I still need to paint on the uh, helmet logos with some white paint. It's a throwback helmet as well. So once upon a time, the bear's C was in white rather than orange. Okay. And there's a sprinter figure. Again, for me, this works better. I prefer painting on a chin strap than fooling with those paper straps, which, you know, a sheet of those for 36 costs $5, and at least five of them are going to be defective almost every time. They'll either have already come off the uh, backing, or they'll be on the backing crooked and stuck on the, on the adhesive paper below it. And won't come out properly, and you'll lose a few trying to get them out of the uh, out of the backing with your exacto knife or whatever you plan to use for that. Okay, now let's look at one of the backer figures. And you can really tell with the face on it; there's just no symmetry there, and uh, I, that's the very best I could do, really. But again, once the face masks are on there, that's going to be obscured and hidden. But there we go. Okay, there's the other one. Okay. And now we'll show the alignment figures here. It's a little easier to uh, paint the chin straps on the linemen. Of course, the, the linemen chin straps are the least visible once the face masks are on. So that's ironic. Okay. Two more. There we go. That looks all right. And again, I wasn't striving for perfection here because they will be obscured. There's no need for perfection in that regard. Okay. There we go. And again, I, I understand it if, if you wish I'd taken the white paint and gone out with the two little cat whiskers on both sides of the helmet. But um, I just didn't see the need to do that. All right, so there we go. And you may be seeing some dust on these. I mean, these have been out on the table for quite a while. And not as long as the previous project or the project before that, but we're approaching those times. Looks like I need to touch up the orange paint there on the uh, on the uh, tights there. Of course, I'll probably be drawing a Sharpie marker right over that and trying to make those bumblebee stripes with the blue Sharpie there on the, the tights. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm not going to mess with the socks. I'm not going to mess with the hands or the elbows or the uh, arms on these figures. I don't even think I'm going to put that little white plate that I've been uh, using because now I've got a strong light I can center up these face masks and anyway this is a throwback uh, uniform of sorts custom uh, fantasy throwback uniform so there you go uh, like I said folks uh, I am still uh, painting electric football figures very slowly and uh, once I get all the paint on these we'll apply a clear coat of that Tamiya gloss paint uh, for a sealer after they're touched up and I'm, I'm happy with the sharpie and the uh, the paint on them and then uh, uh, you know the drill uh, decals 
water slide decals for the jersey numbers. And then uh, the face mask. And we'll call that a finished painting, so to speak. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll probably uh, show you these again once I get all the steel, or the I almost said Steelers, the uh, Bears uh, helmet logos on these. Be curious what these will look like with white paint rather than orange paint. Uh, but I'll walk you through how I do that. Uh, I, I went back in my videos on painting and I didn't see anywhere I talked about painting the chin straps. So that's why I went ahead and and I went through this. FYI, I did it all. All that, what you just saw right there, I did with this toothpick. So, you know, that was not brush strokes. So, uh, more and more, uh, I rely on the toothpick for fine details on these figures. And uh, just use the toothpick and other colors to clean up lines and stuff. And that works just as well for me, then, as a, um, uh, a brush. There are folks out there that actually use a very uh, fine uh, needle uh, to uh, paint with. You know, little dot painting, they call it, to get nice, ultra-fine lines doing it that way. Uh, the only thing that deters me from doing that is I don't want to prick my finger with a needle. Um, you know, using the X-Acto knife to cut out the uh, decals is is risky enough for me. Uh, I, want, I don't want to press my luck in that regard. All right, well, thanks for watching. I don't know when I'll get to, to actually paint on these figures again. Um, uh, I am, a, of course, anxious to finish this project so I can do what I always do, assert that I'm going to be taking a break from painting and then immediately start the next project, which will be Home Team Tennessee Volunteers in my case. All right. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.